Rightio, the next part of this adventure takes us to a little place called Wooliana on the Daly River. So it's about 230 kilometres uh, south of Darwin. It's just southwest of the bottom of the Litchfield National Park. And it's a beautiful place. Lots of mango orchards down there. It's really quite surprising when you get in there um, just how much is there in the middle of absolutely nowhere. But um, Wooliana is one of the resorts. There's quite a few around, probably half a dozen or so. And they're all really lush and green and grassy and uh, most of them are sort of you camp under the trees. A lot of them you camp in amongst the mango trees. So it's gorgeous. Main reason we went down to Wooliana was to catch some fish. So uh, that was the reason we headed down there. We could hire a dinghy. That's, that's why we chose the Wooliana resort was they do boat hires down there. Not cheap, $280 for the day, but it was a good boat, probably four and a bit metres long with a 40 horsepower motor, so it zipped along. And you'll see some of the footage of the boat when, uh, when we're on the river. But a uh, bit of a spoiler alert, there were no barramundi hurt in the making of this video. In fact, there were no barramundi harassed or even disturbed in the making of this video. We didn't even see one. Well, that's, not, that's a lie. There were a couple of follows and lures, but no hookups at all. And there was probably half a dozen people down there fishing and they'd been fishing uh, for a couple of them for a couple of weeks and hadn't really caught many fish at all. So it's not the season, middle of winter. Everyone keeps telling us that uh, you've got to be there during the wet season or at the runoff, the build up and the runoff, as they say, um, to really get into the good barra. But Daly River apparently is uh, renowned for its good barra Monday fishing, but unfortunately, we didn't see any of it. So there's some great footage, great pictures of crocodiles. There are plenty of crocs down there and some really big crocs as well. So if you like your crocs, this is a great place to see them. But it's a terrific spot and uh, we really enjoyed our stay down there. We're down there for three days and uh, it's a, a lovely campsite, nice and lush and grassy and uh, the river is really interesting. So uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Wooliana on the daily. Terrific place. So we're down now at the at Daly River Township, I guess, and this is the uh, crossing. So we're just going to have a little click in here somewhere. See if we can raise a barra. Not a crocodile. Not a crocodile. So we're just upstream of the Daly River crossing and it is just so beautiful up here, it's unreal. It is such a shame, this is all fresh water so it's running out the cascades you can see there is the fresh water running out towards the mouth of the river. So it's all fresh water but you can't set your foot in it unfortunately which is such a shame because it is just so beautiful. But anyway, I'm just going to have a couple of flicks at the uh, pandanuses here and um, see if I can fluke myself a little barra. So we're back from our uh, fishing expedition this morning, our fishing road trip. No luck though. Raised a few. <laughs> Aussie be proud of us. We did raised a few. Well, we saw them. They chased the lures briefly, so that, that counts as raised a few. So now we're off to the swimming hole for a swim and uh, we're going to take our books and have a lay around there at the swimming hole and um, which is the swimming pool yeah we'll show you the swimming hole it's a pretty fancy swimming hole this one it's one of the only places you can swim around here but it's lovely so we're going to go off have a swim and then um, we might this afternoon might do our caravan and four-wheel drive walkthrough see how enthusiastic we get see it's pretty warm 33 degrees but there is a little breeze blowing, so it's not too bad. It's quite nice. Beautiful here underneath the mango tree. It's our resident mango tree. Heaps of mangoes on it, which you may or may not be able to see. So this is the, um, this area here is sort of the common area. So they, you camp on the left and on the right of it. And this big grassy area is the common area in the middle, which is just lovely, absolutely beautiful. Anyway, go and put some boardies on and uh, head down to the swimming hole. Just through these reeds here, we come to the watering hole and there it is. There's our watering hole for the last few days 
and it's been sensational. A very welcome relief late in the afternoon for a nice cool dip here. It's been beautiful. So one of the many great features of this little spot, Woolliana on the daily. It's a uh, terrific little campsite. Beautiful shady relaxing spot to spend the afternoon under the shade of the mango tree, reading a book, admiring how well raked the lawn is. Yeah, I don't have a fetish about raking leaves at all. I had to go and borrow the gardener's rake just so I could tidy up around the caravan. Um, I'm going to take you for a walk down to the boat ramp um, again, or the pontoon again. That one of those two big crocs is laying up on the bank, pointing out towards us, which uh, looks really good. So I'll go down and see if I can get a photo of him. So, down on the pontoon. Makes you a little bit nervous standing so close to the edge of the water on the pontoon here. Considering our friendly crocodiles just on the other side of the bank over there. Don't know whether you can see them, there's one just laying up there now. There's two residents here and they're both, it's probably three and a half metres long. Maybe pushing four, but they're big crocs. I'll uh, put some photos in so you can see. But they're up there every afternoon, smiling away at us. Well, there's one there now. The other one, we're not really sure where he is. Could be. River. He's got his lucky orange shirt on. There's still no luck. We're, uh, what is it, 9.30, we've been at it for an hour, haven't got anything, even wearing the orange shirt, Oz. But we just realised the one missing piece to this puzzle is we haven't had a beer yet. We've got Jack Johnson playing in the background orange shirt on in a really fishy looking spot. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it actually looks cross between crocodile friendly and fish friendly, this little spot here. So I think it might be time to have a beer. It's the one missing piece of the spot. We don't get this in Exmouth Aussie, but still a tradition's a tradition. Here's to the fish and hopefully not too many of those crocodiles. Fish gods, crocodile gods. As you can see, the uh, current is ripping in. It's about a seven metre tide up at the mouth of the river today. I reckon that will bring about two metres of water into the river. And it is ripping in. Fish here. It's a nice turbulent water and a bit of a back eddy just there. Just going to get Lisa to cast into that. Another cast right into the shore and then drag it back slowly towards us. Straight at the crocodile. Yeah. So it looks like our fishing for the morning might be over. Just have a look at the current ripping in this river here. All this debris, there's so much debris coming downstream, upstream, upstream. It's actually flowing, flowing, yeah, flowing from the ocean towards us. From the ocean inland, I should say. So, yeah, big current coming in. So, we might just have a beer and maybe a sandwich. What time is it? It's a bit early. 11 o'clock. I don't know what we're going to do. I, I guess we kind of have to sit out the rest of this current, I think. I don't think there's much point fishing in this current. You 
you can't troll, there's just way too much debris in the river. But it's a beautiful spot. I reckon just put your lure out the back 10 metres behind the boat, just let it drift in the, in the, in the current, see what comes past and we'll have a beer. We're still parked up here, just watching the wood drift by in the current and uh, we just had a big barra buff right behind us. So uh, unfortunately not near where the lure was, at least it's having another, another few casts. But have a look at this, look at the size of the logs that are coming down this river, the size of this thing. So what that be probably the best part of 50 foot, I'd say. 15 metres or so and what we might have to do is get going and try and beat it downstream because we've got to go across a rock bar and there's not much room across the rock bar and if that thing gets jammed then we're going to be stuck <laughs> so we might um, fire up undo uh, the rope and uh, head down the other side of the rock bar I think just in case we can't get through I feel a little bit like a uh, Canadian lumberjack timber log roller with all of this lumber in the river. Have a look at it. It's just everywhere. Just trying to pick our way through it at the moment. And then this one's going the opposite direction. Oh, that's because it's stuck on the bottom. So we just have to slowly pick our way through the lumber. We might uh, call it quits for an hour or two let this current subside and then maybe have a go out again this afternoon. We can go to the water hole and have a swim. Oh, that's a good idea. I might go to the water hole. That's a great idea. Have our other ham and cheese sandwich. Maybe our third beer row. Uh, someone has had two beer He was sharing them. I'm sure I shared them. Anyway, we're going to try and find our way through this little maze up here now. So we're sheltering out of the sun. It's just gone three o'clock and it's stinking hot. And so we found ourselves a nice shady little corner with a lovely little breeze. And uh, we parked here underneath the paper bark trees. Just enjoying a nice cold beer row while Lisa tries to catch us dinner. Good cast hunt. She lost a mojo there for a while this morning, lost a couple of lures, and just fell apart. We had to have a serious talk to her, get us to uh, pull herself together and uh, get that casting arm back into action and it looks like it's paid off. So she's back on target again, although still hasn't caught us a fish. But neither have you. Yeah, yeah, but I've got another job. I've got to drive, so I've got a very important job to do. <laughs> Lisa's gone for the bait lure combo. <laughs> a bit of probably four month old squid on the end of the soft plastic hook. Not too sure how that's going to go, but uh, still it's worth a try. Nothing else seems to have worked this morning, so can't do any worse than that. It's going to be knocked unconscious. Mm. We uh, parked up before right next to a crocodile. Didn't even know it was there. It's only a freshie, thank goodness. Oh yeah. Try some bottom dancing. Okay. So there it is. I'll try and get in the shade here a bit. There we go, that's a bit better. That's where we're staying. Wooliana Tourist Park on the Daly River. Highly recommend it. Not so much for the fishing, but the camping side of it. I'm sure the fishing in the right time of the year is, is uh, amazing. It's just we're not here in the right time of the year, unfortunately. But still, we had a fantastic day out on the river, hired the tinny, went out, cost us $280, so it's not cheap, but as I said before, nothing's cheap in these areas. So um, for a day's worth of entertainment for the two of us, I think $280 was well spent. It was a great day out on the river. Plenty of crocs, plenty of scenery, beautiful day. But Wooliana Tourist Park, put it on your list.
So that was the Daly River. Great spot, certainly worth a visit. We really enjoyed our stay there. And uh, we'd love to go back when the barra fishing is a little bit hotter in the uh, build up or the runoff. Um, it would certainly be worth a visit, but it's a great spot. Nice and green and shady and uh, really lovely. From the Daly River, we headed out to the Douglas River. And uh, out of the Douglas River, a couple of things to see out there. One is the Douglas Hot Springs, which unfortunately are closed at the moment. Um, they're uh, having a negotiation between the indigenous community that uh, look after that area and uh, the local Parks Australia, I think. Um, not sure exactly why they're closed, but anyway, they are. But the other thing you can get to is Butterfly Gorge. And that's a um, fairly long drive, about 17 kilometers in from the main road and it's a pretty rugged track i'm not saying it's not that rugged actually it's just corrugated nearly all the way so uh, so you still need a four-wheel drive to get out there certainly wouldn't do it in the two-wheel drive but the gorge itself is quite pretty and uh, we had a nice little swim in there although uh, we were a little bit worried about crocodiles it did look a little bit like it uh, could be inhabited by crocs so uh, but you'll see that when we get in there anyway so uh, Douglas River, and uh, Douglas River is about 170 kilometres from the Daly River, and it's almost due east of Daly. Uh, it's just up near Pine Creek, which is just north of Catherine. Um, but it was a lovely spot, and uh, the campsite there, which was the Douglas Daly Tourist Park or something like that. <laughs> they all have fancy names, but they're not really that fancy. Certainly not like the uh, tourist parks you'd find on the Gold Coast. These are really just basically a camp under the trees next to the river but still beautiful it was really nice um, so anyway here's a quick look at the douglas river so we're on the douglas daily river and we thought we'd just come for a drive and see if we could find a, a little spot to drop in and have a little swim somewhere where there weren't too many crocodiles and we found this little oasis this is in here just scouting the water. No crocs? Not yet. <laughs> Have a look how pretty this is. What's the water like? Yeah. Sounds great. So anyway, we're going to go for a swim. Don't let me go first. You go first. <laughs> I'm just doing an artistic shot here with the trees. <laughs> I'm more concerned about the crocodiles. <laughs> I haven't seen a crocodile for probably three hours now. Oh, look at this, it's unbelievable. Wow, this is certainly a very special little spot. And it just keeps going and going. Look at that. Pretty deep. All right, well, pretty deep, relatively speaking. That is stunning. Okay. Walk back upstream again now. So if the sign's not enough to convince you that potentially there might be a crocodile around, then there's a very subtle reminder just down here. So this is a little spot called the uh, hole, believe it or not. So swim down here at the water hole. Besides Lisa, there's there's also a very subtle reminder of the fact that there's crocodiles around because she's always telling me to be careful for crocs but have a look just here so there's a uh, croc trap and it looks like it's got a fairly decomposed uh, sheep's head in it but there you go so obviously <laughs> they must get uh, obviously must get crocs in the river here at times if they've gone to the uh, extent of putting a trap in here 
anyway, lady at the park said, no problems. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? We are here at Butterfly Gorge today, so we're on the uh, Douglas River and um, just come in, so you go past the Douglas Hot Springs or you turn in at the Douglas Hot Springs and they're closed at the moment um, due to some negotiations between the local indigenous community and Parks Australia I think it's called. But anyway, can't go there, so uh, you can come up to Butterfly Gorge and it's 17 kilometres up a pretty bumpy road. <laughs> Lots of corrugations. It's not too bad, but it is pretty corrugated. And then I think it's about a uh, two kilometre walk from here into the gorge. So here we are, Butterfly Gorge. So anyway, here we are, Butterfly Gorge. Just having a look at the bank to see if there's any croc slides here, but it doesn't appear as though there are. There's some people not far behind us. I think we'll wait for them. <laughs> we'll just tell them we're exhausted from that long walk. It is very, I mean, it's quite pretty. How many butterflies have you seen? None. There is something weird over here. Okay, I'll come and have a look at that something weird over there. Are you going in? Can't see any. How brave is this girl? I can make no 100% commitment on the fact that you won't get eaten, but the chances are relatively slim. But it would make great video anyway. Oh, it smells like iron. Iron? Yeah, it's got a funny smell, hasn't it? And with the red tinge on the soil here, it's probably it does stink. what it is. It stinks. I, I called it a sweet smell, but you say it stinks. Radio, that wraps up that part of the uh, the trip so a couple of great spots there a little bit off the beaten track but they're well worth a visit you'll really enjoy them if you go in and uh, and stay at those places at the moment we're in Catherine and believe it or not we're in lockdown so we arrived in here uh, on Monday morning and Monday afternoon at midday the place went into a three-day lockdown someone came out of uh, Sydney via Canberra picked up the virus landed in Darwin spread it around a bit and then came down to Catherine so he works down in Catherine um, so he's been uh, tested positive and now we're in three days worth of lockdown which really throws a spinner in the works because we're only meant to be here for a couple of days and then head into WA so of course WA have done the WA thing, slammed the border shut and um, so now we're just waiting to see how that develops over the next couple of days. But anyway, we'll uh, look after that problem as it develops. So I hope you enjoyed the Douglas and the Daily River videos and uh, well, our next video will be somewhere in WA so we'll see you then.